guys this is I'm Deborah welcome to my channel um, this is my July no August update for the movie madness project and I am so excited because I actually got some stuff finished um, so let me flip over here to movie madness and start with the stories all right, one that has been in here for quite a while, since I think February, January, February, um, is was for the movie Angels with Dirty Faces. This was the Tula Skin Care, the cult classic purifying face cleanser. Um, so for Angels with Dirty Faces, I brought in a cleanser. And it is empty, finally, 195 uses. Um, not, it, it's a bit drying, so I know some of you who have dry skin would not like this. Um, I probably would not purchase it again because of that reason, but it was, it was, it did the job. Um, if I had oily skin, I might would feel better about it, but I did soldier on and um, finished it up. So I'm feeling rather um, self-satisfied right now. Um, Please with myself. All right, so the second product that I had in has been in since the very beginning. Um, that is the Urban Decay Lip Liner in the shade Venom. Um, I used it zero times this month. Um, it is just not something I can wear in the summer, so I promise when it gets starts cooling off again, actually when it gets back to football season, I'll have reason to wear it. Um, it is a lovely shade. It is a um, slightly bluer than brick red, um, but it and it is just beautiful. But in the summer, I want to wear bright pinks and peaches and corals and this is actually about as dark as I get during the summer. Um, I tend to get a little brighter and a little, you know, bubble gummier. Um, but I, I do love these lip liners and I do love this shade. It's just not the right season. So I did not reach for it at all during the month of July. Um, but once football season starts, I, I got a couple of football teams I love that this will be perfect for, for celebrating them. All right, so the next one is the Long Goodbye, which was a product that was never ending. And I've been working on this brow pencil forever. And so this was the um, Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in the shade Granite. I really liked it. I will probably repurchase because even though it's a little bit dark, it's cool toned. And with the um, champagne silver, let's go with that, um, hair. Um, sometimes the taupe colors, like I feel like I'm a little bit, like my eyebrows are a little too warm today. So I gotta work on this. But I will probably repurchase this one because I really enjoyed it. Um, but it is completely, completely done. I cannot roll anything else up. So once again, I'm feeling a little pleased with myself about this one. So the long goodbye will be rolling out. Um, for the movie Gilda, Gilda was a 1947 movie with Glenn Ford and Rita Hayworth. She had the most magnificent um, post-war hair in that movie. And so for that, I rolled in a hair product, hair care product. I rolled in the Pacifica Sunshine Highs Toning Shampoo. This is a purple shampoo. I hated it. Hated every minute of it. Um, I will not buy this again. It smells terrible and it, um, it is very drying and I felt like I needed to deep condition every time I used it and I did. Um, and I still felt like that wasn't enough. So this is going to be a hard no next time for me. If anybody got has any good suggestions about a purple shampoo that is cruelty free and does not strip your hair, please let me know because 
otherwise I'm gonna go back and buy the matrix that I loved you know if it, it, it just is it is all right so the last um, last product in here I rolled in last month uh, for the movie Out of the Past. It was a 1947 film noir. And so I brought something back that had been in a previous project. And actually this one had been in this project previously. This is the Too Faced Ethereal Setting Powder and I'm bringing this back to finish. Um, and I haven't finished it yet, but I have pulled the sifter because it was getting really hard to bang out um, some powder. So this is all that I have left. So not a whole lot left in the container. Um, I'm thinking maybe four or six weeks um, and this one should be done. So that will be that will be nice. So three rollouts, um, it, that's pretty good. I'll take that. Um, that leaves me the powder and the lip liner in the project. So I am going to bring in one project this, uh, one product this time, because you know I have to tell a story. So I'm bringing in a product for a movie that is film noir-ish. Um, this is the movie, um, it was a 1957 movie, Witness for the Prosecution. It was based on an Agatha Christie novel of the same name. It starred Charles Lawton as the barrister. Um, it starred Tyrone Powers as um, Leonard Vull, who has been accused of the murder of an older lady, um, who, who basically, he's a grifter, and he was, he was trying to scam her for money. Um, and it stars Marlene, uh, Marlena Dietrich as his wife. But there's a twist to that, too. So in this movie, um, it b opens up with um, Charles Lawton's character, Sir Roger, um, whose last name I've just is completely blanked on. If you asked me 10 minutes ago, I'd remember. Um, but Sir Roger has is coming back to his law practice from having had a heart attack and he um, is supposed to take it easy and not take any court cases. Well, this um, one of his attorney friends shows up with Mr. Vole just to ask advice on how to proceed with this case because Mr. Vole has been um, accused of murder um, and he actually gets arrested while he's visiting Sir Roger. Um, but in the course of, of the conversations, um, Sir Roger decides he's going to take the case regardless of his doctor's advice. So um, Mr. Vole gets packed up by the police, taken off to be booked, and um, the wife shows up, Marlena Dietrich, in her finest, most stoic, blunt character type that she plays um, and she is certainly not the hysterical wife that Sir Roger was expecting. She is very matter-of-fact. She is um, he, she was a war bride that had been brought back from post-war Germany um, and he she is very he's very she's just kind of gobsmacked um, over her. He's just not sure what to do with her other than he doesn't want to put her on the stand because he doesn't think the, the British um, jury would believe her if she's because she is his alibi. So as as things go on you get this um, the story unfolds and you get more information on the evidence. It turns out that Mrs. French, the woman who was murdered, had actually changed her will the week before to leave um, Mr. Vole eighty thousand pounds, which was all of her, all of her life savings. She didn't. She was a widow and she didn't have any children. Um, her uh, may her uh, cook um, testified that she had heard Mr. Vole and Ms. French um, at the time, shortly before the murder. 
um, in Mrs. French's rooms, but uh, Sir Roger was also able to bring up that she had already requested um, hearing aids and did not hear well, so she could not possibly have heard those raised voices. They must have been the television or something else, but she couldn't possibly have heard them. Um, and so in the, it looks, however, like the, like the, the gentleman is going to be convicted. And so later that evening, um, Sir Roger gets a call from a mysterious woman who purports to have letters that will prove that the wife is lying um, and that she's, it's this, this whole big situation and that she's perjured herself. And she, and she does, she, he goes to meet her at the train station. He pays her for the letters. She gives him the letters and um, that's that. So he shows up in court the next day ready to, um, and they're ready to do closing arguments. And he says, no, I have new evidence. I would like to be able to give it. And they allow it. So he introduces into evidence these letters purportedly written from the wife to another lover. Um, and she it turns out she actually has a husband back in East Germany and she had, so she's, the marriage to Mr. Vole was actually null and void because she was already married to somebody else. So her testimony um, could be taken, but there was conversation. She was, you know, the, the jury no longer um, um, believed her because she had changed her testimony and said he was definitely not with her. So it was a, a whole a whole big thing. Um, so one of the things that happens is at the end of the movie, um, Mr. Vole is found not guilty because his wife is such a terrible creature. Basically, they I don't they felt sorry for him and you know the whole thing. So he is released. And it turns out his wife had done these things knowingly. She was actually the ones that wrote the letters and presented the letters and had gone in disguise to the train station because she knew that the jury would not believe her if she gave him an alibi. Um, anyway, she, it, she, he ended up getting off because she perjured herself. So she was being arrested and going to go to jail for five years for perjury. Turns out that Mr. Vole has a girlfriend. And he did indeed murder Mrs. French to get her money. And now he is going to let this, his wife ish, take the rap for the murder or for perjury and go to prison. And he's planning on running off with his sweet young thing. So there was a knife on the table, on the evidence table and the wife grabs him and stabs him right there in the courtroom and kills him dead. And they trot her off to jail, the end. It was a lovely movie. Very 19, very post-war Europe. Um, loved every minute of it, love Agatha Christie's work. Um, so that is uh, the movie that I'm rolling in this week, Witness for the Prosecution. So this, it takes place in London, and there's this whole series of shots and jokes and stuff about his, him and his, the barrister and his wig. Um, so I'm rolling something in from a British brand, and I'm rolling in a lipstick from, um, I know I'm not going to get this right, um, Ciate, Ciate London. This is from their Miss Piggy line. I love this. Um, it is called Piggy Power. And it is a very lovely corally pink. And it is fairly bright. I just love it. And it actually buffs out and would make a really, um, if I don't put that much on to start with, it really buffs out nicely for a cream blush. 
so I may use it one of either ways and I'm bringing it in for 10 uses um, for witness for the prosecution. So that is the movie that I am bringing in. I'm only going to bring in one this time. And um, I've kind of decided to do it that way. That as however long the products stay in, they stay in. But I will bring one movie in and tell one story. Because I really am all about telling stories. This is just a way for me to tell stories. Okay, guys. So that is my update for Movie Madness for August. And the information, if you wanted to join in with this project, is down in the description box. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.